Uh, Mr. Flanagan, who wanted to ask some questions, please. Uh, thank you very much for uh, very interesting presentation. I have a question for uh, the first two speakers. Well, one question for the first speaker and uh, a few questions for the second speaker. Um, uh, and I risk pronouncing your name wrong, but I'm going to give it a go. Mr. Guivia, um, you mention average farmer incomes compared to wages in the economy, and now it's up to 46.5%. If you were to look at that graph and take it on its own, you would think that farmer incomes have gone up. But as we all know, in the last 10 years, you don't need to be an economist or a social scientist to read the newspapers and see that people on average incomes are less able to afford houses, less able to afford energy, less able to afford everything. And the reason is their wages in real terms have come down. Do you think that that graph is actually an honest representation of success, the fact that it's now up at 46.5%, the highest, or is it just statistics and uh, how statistics sometimes don't really tell the truth? Um, for Mr Mowgli, uh, just in relation to a few things that were said, uh, increase in exposure to world markets and trade agreements, uh, that this is a challenge. Is this not a self-inflicted wound that we continue to impose upon ourselves? And uh, that wound, we have to refill the blood into that body out of the cash of, out of uh, people's pockets through the common agricultural policy. Um, the most important question I have here is though, and it's obviously in relation to added value, and with the new cap, will the new cap lead to more added value? And I would suggest it wouldn't, because it's going to need to low, no real distribution. We get a theory from farming organisations that those on high payments are more productive, and that somehow to redistribute it, and remember the caps, new cap has been described as meaningless when it comes to redistribution by economist Alan Matthews, that if you actually look at the facts, if it's added value European money, you would imagine there would be value added. And I'll give you some figures from Ireland. For people on payments of 100 to 200 euros of a basic payment, they produce 1.19 livestock units per hectare. Absolutely every other payment level does better than those who are getting over €1,000 per hectare. They only produce 1.18 livestock unit per hectare. Those on 200 to 300 produce 1.6, 300 to 400 produce 1.77, 400 to 600 produce 1.7 and 600 to 800 produce 1.6. Those on the biggest payments produce less than everyone except for those on payments under €100. Euros. So from the point of view of added value, if there's added value under the current system that will not change with the new system, if it's added value, can someone please tell me how it's added value that the more you pay a farmer and the ones on the biggest payments actually produce less? Someone explain that to me because it's not going to change under the new system. So, please, if you can answer. Thank you. Um, I'll try to uh, uh, highlight a couple of uh, things uh, regarding the question on, uh, on farmers' income. The graphic that uh, I used in, uh, in my presentation is based on Eurostat data and DGI uh, calculations. Uh, we uh, as COPA and COJEC, we don't produce uh, statistics, we don't collect uh, data. So uh, this is what uh, we use to showcase and to highlight the situation that we currently have. And if you recall, during my uh, short presentation, I mentioned, I used a sentence. The CAP has been successful in many things, but it has failed so far to deliver on uh, income for farmers. And this is something that we clearly need to address and, and redress. Uh, and I would even go further and say, and I didn't use this uh, in, in my presentation in this graphic, but the, the first estimates of farm income uh, for 2018 that were presented uh, barely uh, before Christmas break point to a 3% drop. Uh, in, in income. So the situation is not improving. So we clearly need to do something about it. There was the first question from Mr. Flanagan, uh, arguing basically that uh, uh, when, when I mentioned trade agreements, we, are, we have here a self-inflicted damage uh, because uh, 
uh, first we open up the markets and then we try to, to limit the damage by paying direct income support and so on and so forth. I mean, first I would, I would like to say that uh, agriculture is not an island. Agriculture is part of the overall economy. And uh, there have been at EU level and at national levels decisions that were made in the last 25, 30 years uh, to liberalize trade. And of course, trade liberalization can not only work for industrial products and for services, it will necessarily include uh, agricultural as an important sector, because this, of course, agricultural base of uh, primary production is one thing, but then on top of that, there is all the processed products and the food industry that is one of the biggest uh, economic actors in the European Union. So I think it is unrealistic. Uh, to, uh, to, to believe that one could exempt agriculture from this overall globalization, trade liberalization uh, uh, activities over the last 25 years and say, but if we hadn't done that, then the, situation, the price situation would be, would be better. Uh, in, in any case, uh, uh, the fact that the EU is now an, a net exporter of food products means that there is a lot of added economic value that comes back to the European Union because we are in a position to produce high value and high quality processed products that are demanded on the world market and the money that is paid for that comes back to the European Union. Now whether uh, the, everybody has this, the, the fair and equitable share of the benefit that comes back is certainly another discussion that goes far beyond the agricultural sector. Uh, then the, the question was asked uh, whether uh, there is the, Mr. Chairman, you, you asked a question um, about uh, um, the, the distribution of, of, direct, of direct payments and that this was not, not equitable or not, 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 uh, not fair. Uh, and I have, I've listened to what uh, Mr. Flanagan said about that. I think, and that's my experience from all the discussions that I'm, I'm faced with, that there is no consensus at all in the European Union about what is the right parameter to measure the need for a direct payment. Is it productivity, or, which is, I think, in Ireland, very much an argument which we have already heard in the past, which is perfectly legitimate to argue? Uh, is it the, the need, whatever the need may be, that has been argued by Mr. Milionis for the Court of Auditors? Is it the farm size, which seems to be a very often used argument in that context? I have no clue, I must say. And it's very, very difficult to find a, a political consensus uh, about, uh, about that. And that's probably why we have kind of a mixture of all that. We have a, a system, let me refer to Germany, which is now the same size. Every hectare gets the same amount. If a system like in Ireland or in Spain or in Italy, with his, where the historic values of uh, farm support per hectare play still an important role, uh, and um, uh, many argue, and the proposals contain certain elements on that, and say that the farm size in air, expressed in area should not be uh, a decisive uh, element and parameter in that context. Very, very difficult to give you a, a definitive answer. And then the, the last question of the, the drop in, I wanted to say something about the drop in, in farmer uh, income. I mean, what these statistics that we have seen expresses is the difference between farm income and general income. I would guess that there is a, a relation between both. And when the general situation means that the income goes down, farm income would also go down to a certain extent. It would be amazing that the general income goes down and farm income goes up. So the, the, what we can show is that, uh, of course, the financial crisis meant a drop in farm income, quite significant as it meant in general income. But we can also show that farm income has picked up again and is, has now, is now above the levels uh, of the crisis years. Uh, I understand that uh, income has gone down uh, in, in 2017, uh, 18, uh, but I mean this is probably due, due to the drought that, that we have been experiencing in 2018, which led to significant losses uh, for farmers in certain uh, production areas. It will go up and down from year to year. There will be fluctuations. What's important is that there is a positive trend, which we can see in recent years. And of course, direct payments, as Mr. Gouveia was saying, play an important role in that context, because they are there to 
give farmers additional income to make sure that we live up with the objective under Article 39 of the treaty uh, to ensure that there is a, 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 a reasonable amount of income that farmers uh, and, and the farming population is, uh, is enjoying. Uh, I understand. Of course, there are statistical factors, this is clear, uh, but uh, I, once again, I would plead in favor of not isolating agriculture from the rest of the economy. Uh, just uh, one uh, small question for the European Court of Auditors, and it was mentioned, how, it was mentioned by Mr. Mowgli how, and by the way, I have great time for the cap, I think it's brilliant, but it could be even better. But uh, what they've done in Germany is very interesting uh, as a kind of example of what happens when you go to a flattened payment system. Because the big fear in our country, it's not a fear from me, but by certain farming organisations, is that productivity will go down and we'll all starve almost. You'd nearly think that it was going to happen. But we now have an example in a very big country uh, where they've actually done this. Is there, any I, data, I, is there any data to say has productivity gone down or not? And will, you, will you be able to find that out? I'll stop now. I agree to one sentence. Oh, sorry. sorry, long sentence. <laughs> Okay, is there some quick reaction or it's, it was just a comment? Okay. I, I have no data here, uh, but in, in general, my perception is that the German agricultural uh, sector is operating very well uh, and is highly competitive because it's, it's very strong in export. Uh, so I would, at least at first sight, but I will check with my colleagues and maybe I can give you further information about that, I would not suggest that this as such is a, is a bad model. The question is whether it would work in Ireland, but I have no answer to that. Thank you to you all. Um, thanks to Mr. Flanagan. And um, I apologies that the colleagues do not really... Um, now it's, it's campaigning period. It's a bad period for doing for trying to think, um, to think a little bit far. This is the Budget Control Committee. It it's, gives me a good opportunity to question uh, DG Agri uh, in an environment where there aren't too many people around and you basically get the floor to yourself. You get to ask an awful lot of questions. But as the chairperson said, uh, it's a pity more people didn't turn up because this is a really important committee. Uh, she said it was campaign season and uh, in fairness to her, she's an absolutely excellent chair. But what are they campaigning for? They're campaigning so they can have the right to come in here and talk. But they're not turning up today, so they can campaign to come in here and, what, not turn up again? You'd have to question whether it's good value to have 28 translators here. For, at the end of the meeting, one MEP who wasn't sitting at the top table, there was one MEP at the meeting. And people would say, oh, well, you're just trying to spread Euroscepticism. There's a great way to kill Euroscepticism. Let the MEPs turn up for work. That might kill it a little bit.